Look at his eyes. What's up? What's up, dude? How the hell are you? It's, uh... It's Hate Stack and Salbocha. Just a couple good old boys. Checking out Fantasy Star Online. This is what Ultimate Mode looks like. Ultimate Difficulty changes the environments just a little bit. The art, the characters. Uh, not the characters, but the fucking the enemies, which I guess are characters in a way. The camera's always been hell. You so did you shoot at the fucking uh oh shit I died. You shot at the raccoon. You like took a shot with your fucking USP, dude. Did you hit your house? Well, look at this tall drink of water. Just got a nice nose. Fucking triangle for a nose. Yeah. Um. And you were, I, you know, I'm sure that in all the time you sat there, you were like aware that if I hit this thing, it's gonna make a fucking bloody mess. And it it's just so bad that you were ready to clean up raccoon blood. Because at least it would mean there's no more raccoon. Paid 10,000 Meseta for that saber. Oh shit. It's good general armor. What am I wearing now? Guardian. Have you seen it coming and going before? I bet it knows. It knows it's living for free in your place. And it just doesn't give a fuck. It, it probably knows to avoid you. Because you're going to be pissed if you find it. You've seen it around, like a neighbor. <laughs> it's just coming and going. What an asshole. Oh, man. You know, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe it was just hibernating. 
it was being quiet and laying around um, Hobber Night. Oh, okay. Yeah, she says, check out this asshole. That's funny. Let's take a look at this. Check out this asshole. It's not the kind of asshole you want to see. This is... This is going to be a... Yeah, I don't want the fucking app. Okay. I just want to see. Oh. Oh, there it is. Holy shit, dude. It's adorable. It's a little cutie up in the attic of that A-frame. What is that th on a, on the tray in the center? Is that poison that you've put out? Or what is that? Have you considered poisoning it? You could hear it pissing in the ceiling. What a fucking asshole. Leave through the hole. Oh, so you've, you've repaired the hole and... Um, Uh, trapped it fucking in there. You... Oh, dude. So it's just laying around pissing. It probably fi finally got out. Oh, so <laughs> you had a squirrel trap up there, too. And, uh... What if, if you poison that thing, then you would just have a rotten raccoon? living in your walls and that wouldn't be any good that would be worse than having a living raccoon right then you've got a raccoon fucking skeleton laying around you got maggots in your walls decompose your you're opening holes closing holes fucking hurting raccoons Yeah, that's fucking unacceptable. You can't have a raccoon up there pissing in your home, dude. Because that's going to that's going to be bad for, you know, even if you don't mind raccoon piss. Like he's going to keep pissing in the same spot and it's going to eat away at the wood. It's going to rot the wood out. You can't turn your back on these things or they will leap at you. I just like to freeze them. See him trying to sneak up on me over there? Like a raccoon. Oh, you really think it's gone? Oh, so w the one that you sealed up is... Uh, you're pretty sure that he left. So that video was taken before you reopened a hole and sealed the, the new hole. Get away! I don't like that my mag is like a biological looking thing. I mean, I guess they're all biology. I don't know. Oh, he wants to leave on a motion cam. For... Dude, you used technology, really, uh, to the best of your ability to fucking get rid of this thing. We watched it leave on a motion camera. Like, that's... That's the kind of uh, commitment to a solution that a year of hearing scratching in the wall will lead you to. Like a fucking horror movie. Scratching in the fucking wall. Now I could hear uh, at my previous apartment, I could hear something. Um... Her parents are pretty cool, man. They're all about. They're not afraid of technology, dude. They're they know games and shit. Um, 
Yeah, my previous apartment, I could hear a mouse or something in the walls. And I mean, I could hear something big too, like uh, like maybe a rat, but mice only actually ever came into my living space. At one time, it sounded like it was in my my room, but not just in my room, but like right at my ear, like in the wall at my ear. And I'm banging on the wall. It doesn't give a fuck. It just keeps chewing on whatever it's chewing on. And, uh, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And finally, when um, mold destroyed my bed, and I had to, I had to pull the bed apart. I found mouse feces under the mattress, where apparently it wasn't just in my head or by my next to my head or whatever. It was fucking. It, it had, at least for a little while, it had been coming and going in this very small space between my mattress and the platform bed and 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 that's when i was like yeah dude i'm i'm definitely moving out of here pronto moisture destroyed my bed and then fucking i'm living on a futon and water comes in and almost destroys all my other shit and then when i went and visited you guys i was basically living out of boxes just waiting for a new a place a apartment to open up and even after I moved in here, I couldn't really enjoy it for a couple weeks because I've been fucking, you know, working. And uh, so, like, I was still living in boxes for the last couple of weeks. But today I hung up all my art. I hung up some fabric on the walls and shit. Made it look, made it look like an opium den, really. But that's just the kind of comfort I aspire to. Get out of my face. See, these Bartles are so big that they get in each other's way, and like only one at a time can really get in your face. And if you freeze him, then he's fucked. It foils their whole plan. The AI just bumps into other AI. This frozen shooter is so overpowered. See this shit? I got a mattress, but I don't know what kind of bed I want yet, so I haven't bought the bed. I just contacted my friend to make sure, like, you're absolutely cool with fucking on a mattress on the floor, right? She's like, yeah, dude. She actually said something sweet. She said, I would sleep on a a bed of pine needles and like leaves with you, which I thought was pretty nice. Uh, but I couldn't find any pine needles or leaves. Like, she, you know, she's a classy girl. I gotta make sure she can, she at least consents to getting fucked on a mattress in the floor. You know. I don't want it to be like that guy, uh, the brown guy, Aziz Ansari, who he didn't even like take advantage of a girl. She just she regretted the date so bad that it that it seemed like a Me Too moment. I don't want that. I don't know why I check these items. They're they're never worth having. I'm the world's preeminent fantasy star online streamer. Nobody does this. And nobody's joining my fucking game either. But there's some people around. Hootie, I'm not sure if you're watching this, but we've been running hate radio. And uh, as long as you have notifications, you should know when to call in. I, I can't remember to tell you to call in. Oh, here come the bugs. I don't think the bugs freeze. You can paralyze them? No, they freeze.
but I uh, my my roommate is cool. She's very sweet. Um, considerate. She helps run the museum. Whoops. Oh fuck me, dude. Yeah, I mean, we always uh, we always want collars, but we can never. Um... I I think what it is is we don't want to like chase people down and beg them to call into the show because then they're like, uh, okay, so what the fuck do you want? And we had, uh... you know, we have enough to talk about between just me and Billy anyway. But I I remember you saying you wanted to call in. And you are definitely welcome to do that. We've been doing it almost every night. Might do it tonight. I mean, we're not doing anything else. I have all this time to prepare. Oh, did you see that? Fucking killed three and a three hit combo. That's the kind of uh, fantasy star stuff that's like, um, that's the closest you get to like uh, satisfaction in this game. <laughs> Besides finding some unique item or some horse shit. Yeah, we, uh, Hootie, you could, if you don't want to call in and be yourself, we're always looking for people who will uh, do voices. We need people to do voices, people who can do voices. Like, uh, you don't have to be like the president or anything, but just, um, you don't even have to do a fake voice. Really, we need somebody who can, who can just understand a premise and, um, like, what kind of character am I supposed to be? Am I an asshole? You know, am I, am I like super left wing? Am I a hippie? You know, am I a, a racist? We we <laughs> we want to talk to all those kinds of people. Calling them for what? The channel murder is love. Um, this channel does two things right now it streams fantasy star online during the day and then at night it becomes a call-in <laughs> radio program and uh and yeah it's a live radio show so it's still this channel yeah technically you are calling this channel but the format is different you can look at some of the older videos and see what i'm talking about we just kind of use this channel as our medium for the radio program, um, which is published a podcast on Apple, iTunes, and all that crap. Spotify, whatever you use. It's all um, modernized. Yeah, we do it. We normally start it around, I don't know, like 12.30 at night. Um, what kind of morning? You, you listen to a morning show. What morning show do you listen to? I listen to the Monday Morning Podcast by Bill Burr. He's probably one of the funniest American comics right now. Oh, 
We'll go to Flame Barrier. Elvis Duran, just a radio station. Oh, okay. It, it must uh, it must come like on the uh, on the radio, like terrestrial. Uh, you pick it up on your car stereo. Yeah, we we just did an episode um, where my friend Chandler called in, pretending to be uh, that kid. We call him MAGA face, the kid wearing the Make America Great Again hat who got up in the Indian's face. Nathan Phillips was a Navajo guy. They were at some pro-life rally or something, and the uh, Make America Great Again kid like went from the back of the line or the back of the crowd to the front of the crowd to confront Nathan Phillips. I don't know. This was brave, I guess. And uh, <laughs> science waves. And uh, um, so my friend pretended to be him. And I, I don't think we would have even done anything like that except that somehow... At some point, uh, Billy created a Twitter account for this kid, pretending to be that kid. And a woman uh, became just fanatically in love with him. Like, she couldn't believe that she met the guy. Like, this kid that made a national headline is on Twitter. Like, and she, you know, she is just from some trailer park in Oregon. And she has the dumb luck of meeting this guy. So she can't believe it, right? She's like, like she goes from just from being a nobody to like worshiping this guy, so we think, okay, um, she's gonna call into the show because she wants to talk about this kid, and maybe we could like pretend to be him, but it couldn't be me or Billy, even though Billy was the one uh, messaging her over Twitter, so it had to be me, or no, no, it couldn't be me either because I was running the show, so it had to be Chandler. And um, he agreed to do it. So we're just like, fuck it. We had this lady call in, and then Chandler called in, and they came together, and it worked. And it worked great. And then she thought that she was talking to a, a, a celebrity of sorts, a dubious celebrity, but a celebrity nonetheless. And finally, somebody joined. I wonder if it's pronounced Haze or Hazzy. Hazzy Matt suit. And Dwen. Yeah, now here we go. Yeah, dude, she thought she was meeting a celebrity. And uh, she's like, oh my god, oh my god. And, she, and I could tell that it made Chandler maybe even a little uncomfortable. He was like, oh, it's, it's you. And, like, oh yeah, they need a telepipe. Two people with unpronounceable names. Maybe Dwin is how I pronounce the other one. I have one and a half million Meseta. Now, uh, one of the things they did on this server to break from vanilla just a little bit is to make it so that you can have more money in the bank because 999,000 Meseta just wasn't enough. Oh, Duen hears me. Hi, Duen. No. <laughs> oh. What's the matter? All right. Awesome mags.
on what is so special about these mags. Early players? You mean like people that played the game? Oh, and they do events on this server. He almost got me. Now that they're here, I don't I don't really need to freeze everything. I can just do more uh, DPS. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've just been collecting Meseta with no real goal. No, you know, knowing, not even really knowing how I'm going to spend it. I'm just gathering it up. I don't even, I don't even waste it on charge weapons. Like, even though I've played this since Dreamcast, a problem I have with MMOs is I, I'm like forever a beginner. I'm always sort of in the beginning frame of mind and I never really mature my uh, strategies or you know the way I look at the game oh so the 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 real elite players have moved on from money altogether they live only in photon drop world and the only use they have for uh, Meseta at all is just they might buy it up for use in their charge weapons, which is the most 1% elite fucking way to... Oh shit, what the fuck? Oh, he's got the parasol. And, um... and, so th and they'll even spin their photon drops to get more Meseta. I've, uh, I've not encountered this monolith here. I don't know what the monolith does. There's a mag mafia on Affinia. How do they operate? Do they like to control all the mags? Are they trying to absorb them? They want a magnopoly? The sword looks familiar. I seem to recall that from the Dreamcast. There's a big Rappy. I can't post links here. No, Hootie, you should be able to do that. I don't. I don't control anything. Um, how do I? Maybe I can just click your name and make something happen here. I can make you a uh, something. Ban. I can ban you. Okay. There. Now you're a moderator, so um, you can not only post links here. You can delete others' links. That's just how much power you wield around here. Now, are you? Do you plan to abuse your power? Because that could be funny. Uh, nothing is quite so, as funny as a knee-slapping abuse of power. Homeboy's got a shop, dude.
I never would have imagined that um, one day I'd be playing this game. As a, you know... As a man. Let's face it, I'm a fucking man. And, um... Like, I'd be talking to people about it on the internet. People be, like, playing it with me still all this time later. It still blows my mind that we can even do this. I mean, I've already fought this dragon, like, 30 fucking times, and I'm still excited by the fact that we're all playing this together. Look at those lights. Level 99, baby. Almost level 100. I wonder if I should be picking up these items for other people. Like the discs. Yeah, they're, they're picking stuff up for each other. So I don't... Maybe I should be doing that too. Oh, I just found it. Yeah, it does. It's it's relaxing. It's nostalgic, definitely. The music and everything. But here's the thing: like that feeling is still here. It's still in the game. It's not like a dragon I'm chasing. It feels just like it used to. What's up, Zealot? I like her little jester hat. I am Dwen, PSO, always a great feeling, yeah. I, uh... Yeah, I got... I have mine materials I'll drop off for them. Um... I don't care what quest we do. Yeah, when I was when I was nineteen, I was in college and I would fucking um I would just lay around getting stoned playing this game. Till seven AM and then I would sleep all day. One time I went to school because I knew I needed to go to school, but I couldn't stay awake, so I just like slept at some public place at school like in the uh like in the student center or something for eight hours i, I was there for eight hours like sleeping like a hard fucking sleep like the way you're supposed to sleep in bed and then i woke up it was almost dark out i thought all right i was fucked up i guess i'll go home now <laughs> and play more fantasy star we're still waiting for Hayes. But that was probably not a good thing, right? That was like a time when... Uh, I should have been... Uh, I don't know. Doing something different? What the fuck do I know? Oh, we're all here now. Okay. We're playing Heat Sword. Which I think is VR, right? No. Uh, okay, by process of elimination, I think I figured out it's an extermination. No, I don't know. 
gotta put my candy down. Is it a government quest? Hopkins the Hunter lost it while he was fighting a dragon. So the um, nice thing about coming into Fantasy Star where everybody's drunk or high is it's not like going into a, a home where everyone is drunk or high. That's depressing. Or like a, a place where a bunch of people are, are just hanging around for the purpose of getting fucked up together. That gets super depressing. These, these are bright colors. Uh, is Dante about to fucking show us how it's done here? Yeah, this is, this is crazy. But I'll keep a close eye on Dante here. What is Dante going to do? Jesus. So what is Heat Sword? What is the, uh, what's the thing about Heat Sword that's so different? Hootie's got that Super Bowl box going. He's trying to get everybody to gamble their photon drops into his mag farm. Into his illegal underground mag fighting ring. What's the deal with heat zone? Oh yeah, this is great. Spread needle, I just realized it. It rhymes with spread eagle. It's a slant rhyme. It rhymes with spread eagle. Is there any reward for completing every uh every quest in the game a ton of talos tolos tolos oh it's these things and why do you want to fight these things what's so cool about these things they give a lot of experience points The 
the person running has spent tons of PDs to provide the rewards. Oh, I see. They're, they're being sweet. They're being sweethearts about it. They're not, they're not acting like a big Golgus about it. They're putting in their own stuff. A bulbous Golgus. Uh, yeah, I, in order for me to get a box, I have to put down photon drops, don't I? I have to gamble. And I only have like three or five or something. Maybe I've got more than that. I might have six. But what do I care? I'm not using them on anything else. I'll put my photon drops down. I used to I used to gamble away my whole paycheck as a sports editor of the paper. Also when I was nineteen. And uh, that was the only way I could like stay interested in sports. <clears throat> I'm a new player. Handgun Villa. Damn, you guys know the exactly what would drop from these things, like the rare that drops because of my uh, ID. Am I considered a new player? I guess I am. I've I've only been here since just after Christmas. The only other MMO that I've really committed to in the last couple of years was uh, Fan uh, Final Fantasy XIV. I really love the premise of that game, but. Uh, <laughs> but the storyline was fucking dog shit. I mean, it was... It was just so much filler. It was like 90% filler. I was on the seventh astral boredom, and, and they were still hitting me with filler. Like, dude, I'm playing the game. Just... You know, give me the, give me the story and the way that these characters would actually experience it rather than them deliberating over every l little nuance the the like i'm listening to side characters talk about like the way they want to walk back through the woods or something like i don't give a shit i'm trying to play a final fantasy game here not like read a histor a historically accurate fucking ledger of events as they happen in this fantasy game and um, and I and I couldn't get through the the story. The story itself was a grind, and not a rewarding one. Not like, oh, I walked away with that, and I watched a character, like, be faced with challenges and change and develop. None of that shit, dude. It's just stupid little side characters that I could give a fuck about, and the, and they're dressed up all cute. I don't give a fuck, and they're saying cute little things. I don't give a shit, dude. It's just not. It's a great fucking game, dude. Like, it's a really good game, but they make you grind through this irrelevant slog. I don't know. I mean, I mean that shit was longer than Moby Dick, though. But besides this, that's the only other game... I mean, I would rather they do it like this, where there's no story, or, or what little story you get is is trickled out 
um, as you as you play the game, as you actually play the game game, rather than have to sit through. Uh, like that, there was more reading in Final Fantasy XIV than than I had to do. Like in my in uh, my last semester, my last full year of college, getting an English degree. Yeah, I got a I got a bachelor's in English, and I didn't read as much as Final Fantasy XIV expected me to read. And the gameplay was awesome. There was just something not quite right. Yeah, you, you're... <clears throat> Final Fantasy XIV is a very, very good game, but they they got no respect for the people that, that actually play the game. And uh, their customer service is also really bad at Square Enix. I mean, it's really bad, dude. Like, they, they I don't think they like Westerners or something. And, um, because I think I I asked them a question one time. I was like, you know, does this apply to this, or, or like, you know, am I paying too much here, or you know, do I get, uh, or is there some way I can like, you know, get a refund if I did too much or whatever? They just canceled my shit. They just canceled me, gave me a refund, and they were like, you're good to go. They don't give a fuck. And. And it, if it doesn't come through in their customer service, it comes through in the writing of that storyline, where they make you read everything that every character is thinking or considering or maybe might do on down the road in every fucking conversation. But I was, you know, I, I kind of just had to respect the way they gave me a refund and and just sent me away. I, I really liked that about them that that that's how they handled that because you you don't you really you don't see enough of that you see co you see companies making their uh, call center people bend over backwards and suck your dick doing a back bend uh, because they don't want to lose a twenty dollar sale not Square Enix dude oh you you got a difficult email give them a refund and and tell them to play another game. I fucking love it. Oh my god, dude. Well, this is horrible. Oh my god, it's bad. It's bad on both sides of this warp right now. Oh, here's another warp here. Where's this one go? Back out here. At least I could heal. No, they. Um, it's it's a great game, man. I really like that you can build your own house and that there's a concept of property and and that you know there's like limited space and stuff. I really really like that. That was cool. It's a really well done MMORPG, probably one of the best in existence right now. And if you if you have it within you to finish the storyline. Then it it is easily the best MMO out there, maybe one of the best that's ever made since World of Warcraft. But um, you know, if you care about, hey, take it easy, murder is love. If you care about, um, you know, if you actually care about reading all the work that somebody puts into a game because you you like the story that much and you just have to know how it ends. You know, Final Fantasy XIV just tortures you. It punishes you for for wanting to know and read everything because the, 
they put so much extra in there that is irrelevant and that is is not at all pertinent to the uh, outcome of the story. It's like they they teach you to do they teach you not to do that in school. Any anything that you're writing like this doesn't have anything to do with your main objective. Cut it out. You're meandering. Cut it out. I'll stop. I'll stop bitching about Final Fantasy XIV now. But I, uh, I, I am. Oh, oh, good. We found Hopkins' heat sword. It was in the dragon's mouth. Who would have guessed? It would be in the dragon's mouth. <laughs> um. We're done bitching about Final Fantasy XIV. But I, I wanted to like it, man. And I, and I really gave it. I gave it months out of my life where after work I would come home and play it until it was time to go to bed and I would keep doing that and I would and it just it wasn't paying off dude like they just kept making me slog through even more story talking to little stupid little pixie characters out in the shit oh nice you found a photon drop where'd you where do you find this stuff is, is it around here Yeah, it's all telling, dude. Like, uh, there were scenes in Final Fantasy VII where the characters would be, like, everybody's quiet. And, um, and they don't have to say anything because the immensity of whatever just happened or uh, that you see happening is more than enough. I don't have a floor checking mod. Oh, is this something that Japanese story, uh, writers do a lot? Here, Hayes and Duane, I, I got you guys. I don't know if you can use these items, but... Uh, oh, wait, I need that one. It's it's kind of a deal breaker for me. If if they don't take the writing seriously, I can't take it seriously either. Either, or if they do and it sucks or whatever, then I just can't. I can't even, guys. I can't even. And I don't. I don't think I'm like. I'm such a good writer that I'm. That I get to be a critic of every other. But I can tell when something sucks. I got this burning Vulcan. I don't know if that's any good, but I'm selling it. Maybe I shouldn't sell it. Maybe maybe you guys might want this. I don't know. Looks like we're walking to the door, so... We'll address that another time. So their way of telling stories is to do what the Bible does and to just lay as much detail on you as they can, like a dump truck. Who cares if it has anything to do with this or that? Two thousand Meseta. I feel like we worked harder than that. Yeah, I would love to go back to Final Fantasy fourteen just for the gameplay, but in order to get to the next level of gameplay I have to slog through another two hundred hours of story and I just don't uh I'm just, I don't know, maybe I'm just not that person anymore. We're all together in lobby one. That's the kind of person I am. I'm a lobby one kind of dude. Well, this game, this game doesn't torture you. If you want to read the whole story, you can read the whole story, and it and 
you know, you don't have to say goodbye to your family and they, they wonder where you went for six months. Like, you can read Fantasy Star Story as you go. You can read the fucking Spark Notes in an evening and, and know the entire thing. Um, Final Fantasy XIV just doesn't let you do that. And uh, currently playing City Ruins Shade. Oh, somebody's changed the music. Now we dance. I don't. I don't know how to dance. Is this dancing? <laughs> That's not dancing. Oh my god. I would go back to Final Fantasy XIV, but the, I think the player base is dwindling. And um, no, Zelic, it's on. I just keep everything at ten percent. I hear it. Maybe you can't hear it over my booming vocals. Does it tell you who starts the music? I'm sorry, Hootie. But this this music has words. I didn't know any fantasy star music had lyrics. Um, I have to go out. I have to go get something to eat. I think I'm going to order pizza or something. But I got to go out. Oh, near Autobata. You guys into um, you guys into anime and otaku and Japanese culture and all that stuff. Near Automata is a game. I used to I used to really want to be into um, some of these people don't have names. Oh no, there she is. That's B. Yeah, I used to really want to be into um, all that stuff. I I used to, because all my friends were into anime and shit, and so I uh, I knew that if I wanted to fit in to their club, where somehow they knew every manga style and artist that did it, and they knew how did where did you guys find the fucking time to play all this stuff? And um, oh. I love 100. So I'm halfway there. But anyway, my point is, um, I, I I didn't know where to turn. And, uh, but I knew that I was supposed to be into this crap like my friends were. So I'm watching Toonami after school on Cartoon Network and my parents are in the dining room as, as they tend to be at this time of the day and I was in the living room watching TV doing my homework I had the anime turned up pretty loud I was watching Sailor Moon and I was watching some other shit and I'm watching it I'm bored shitless I'm actually getting my homework done is how bored I am and my parents are like, James, what are you watching? And I and I tell them, you know, I'm watching Sailor Moon. They're like, really? You watch The Simpsons? I said, no, I'm watching Sailor Moon today. And and they say, 
uh, like, I don't believe you. And, you know, I am. And they're like, why are you what? And so it, it came down to a conversation about drugs. They said, are you on? Are you? I was 13. I hadn't started using drugs. Yet. I said, no, I'm not, not doing anything like that. They said, I don't believe you. We want you to, and I got drug tested. My parents drug tested me because I was watching this anime shit that I didn't even like. And I, I didn't know how to tell them that all my friends are like nerds with a capital N. And I'm just trying to get on their level. <laughs> oh, dude. But now, what I liked about the anime kids was their community. They had camaraderie and community, and I didn't have that. I was a loner. And so I was just trying to watch fucking Sailor Moon and understand where my friends are coming from. And trying to like get into that shit. I I just I knew that if I watched enough Gundam Wing and all that and all that shit, that eventually I would I would you know I would be like them. But it didn't matter. I watched the entire Gundam Wing series, which is actually a fucking good show. But I I I never could bring myself to building the models and painting the little characters and stuff. I just couldn't I couldn't take it to that level. But I did get drug tested trying. Yeah, they were paranoid, man. I should have drug tested them. I said, you guys seem a little paranoid. Maybe you're high. What, were you looking at the blinds before I got here? Were you peeking through the blinds like the police know you just did that? Here comes our son. Let's drug test him. Maybe he's on drugs, too. Yeah, I was in my high school, we had cliques. But yeah, I just kind of went between them. I, I had friends in all of them, so I was just kind of, I was in every circle. There was nothing like, oh, he's a jock and he's a whatever. He's a fucking asshole. And there was also no school shooter meme yet. Like, he's a school shooter. I bet nowadays, you can't be dark and moody at all without um, somebody making a joke that you're the next school shooter. At least that's how it is. My, my little brother and sister are just about to graduate high school. Everybody's a school shooter, if you ask them. Um, this has been fun. Um, oh yeah, that's zero tolerance. They don't like that. I used to draw little scenes of war and stuff. Heck, uh, when I was um, when I was eleven, I was making bombs. We've talked about this on the radio program before. I was making bombs when I was 11. I, I, There was even a market for them at school where kids would buy bombs from me. That's how regularly I got into making bombs. This is before 9-11 and every country had not yet had its nervous breakdown. And uh, I got in trouble for supplying bombs to my classmates. And... Uh, I got suspended only for like a couple of days. And I came back, I had to do a couple of days of in-school suspension. They didn't even want to do that, but they were like, well, we got to do something. I know boys will be boys, but we got to do something. You can't just keep bringing bombs to school. But there was no like, oh, he's trying to burn down Western civilization, starting at the library with this little firebomb. Not, nothing like that. Uh, somebody's buzz on my door that's probably my roommate ordered food or something that's what i should do i should order food like she did you're a genius you're a genius if you think to order food from home yeah things were just more sane back then like you couldn't get you know it, it took a lot more to like now it, and, the, and i noticed this when i was in school like most people were pretty cool but there was enough of those kids that really liked the rules and, and really took pleasure in, in listing all the rules that you're breaking. And, oh, he's doing this and that, and there should be a, like a punishment. I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? Do you really want a world where there's just, you're constantly walking on a tight wire, a fucking high wire, a tightrope over punishments and and rules and shit? Like, is that really the world you want? What? That's the, that's the world that 
we all live in now. And um uh, can't say anything anymore. Can't say anything without getting in trouble. No, you can you can still say stuff. It's it's not it's not as bad as like uh as a lot of people would have you believe. It's at least not here in New York City. In New York City, people kind of roll your their eyes when somebody starts in with that shit. Like, about rules and punishments and things should be this way and that way. We're too fucking... I love it, dude. They're just too busy. They're too tired. Nobody gives a fuck about that shit. I, I really... That's something I really love about the city is that they just don't have... <laughs> they just don't have patience for hall monitors here. All right, you guys have been fun. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get pizza. We'll do this again later. We'll we'll play together on fucking Fantasy Star. This is the best game ever. And you guys are, a, you guys are a fun audience. Okay, I'll quit sucking your dicks. Catch you later. Take it easy. Look out for me. I'll look out for you. Peace out. Thank you.